Good morning, everybody. It's good to be here again today, and uh, we are so grateful for the day that the Lord has given to us. And that reminds me of a scripture that I uh, I thought about this morning, and uh, and we all know it because we have read it and heard it so often, but it is still a good verse to remind us that this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And it is good to be reminded of that because the life can sometimes throw us a couple of curves that we don't know for sure how to handle it. And uh, then we need to be reminded that we are in God's hands and He is controlling our lives, I trust. So anyways, good to be able to get together again, we we just ask that uh, you uh, will be, uh, or I shouldn't say ask, I will make a few announcements in regarding our future in, in uh, our church operations. Uh, we will, uh, next Sunday, we, Lord willing, we will be starting uh, the Sunday morning worship services at 11 a.m. and we we will uh, I will I will explain a little bit what is going to be happening, but we do want you to to uh, come early. Those that are coming, come early to allow for proper seating arrangements, and that we are still limited. There's 25 allowed in our co on our uh, our uh, sanctuary. But anyways, here is some of the things that we want you to remember. All safety precautions will be adhered to. And that means two meters or six foot separations from those outside your household. Hand sanitizing as you come in and as you leave. A few things we want you to note is that washroom use will be limited. Uh, nursery is not available, classrooms are not available, and no junior church. So just make a note of that. And uh, also we would like to remind people who, to stay home if they are feeling unwell, even if their symptoms are mild. Or if you feel uneasy about coming, stay home will not hold you accountable for that. We know that this is a time where things are a bit unsettled yet, and so we just want to, we want to pursue with caution. But anyways, that is our objective and our goal. That's our, our plan for next, starting next Sunday. We want to start into this morning worship hours again. So, <clears throat> We trust that you will have a good week uh, when, before we head into, into that uh, plan. I would like to just bow for a quick word of prayer and then we will get started with our singing. Lord, we are so grateful that we have the privilege, opportunity to be able to worship even through this, this means of videoing and and streaming it out to the people, Lord, and we thank you for that. But uh, we also sense that there is an, uh, uh, already a, a sense of urgency to be able to to come together as a fellowship, just to be able to see, see, see each other. And so, Father, I just we are just so grateful for that, and we pray that your hand will continue to be over over us and over our our people and also over our country, Lord, we pray that this this whole pandemic will one day be be a thing of the past and, the, and that it, the sooner the better. So Father, that is my, my observation. So Lord, we just pray that you will guide us now as we do our service this morning. May it honor and glorify you. Pray for Pastor Harry as he preaches the word shares the word with us, and also the songs that we sing, that they might be a blessing and glorify you. We pray this all in your name. Amen. Okay, for our, for our uh, singing, we want to want you to uh, 
sit and enjoy this singing. Our first song is going to be Jesus Paid It All, and it is such a blessing to know that that is true. It's been done. It's been taken care of. And so let's sing with, uh, uh, with joy this morning. <clears throat> Ah. Uh -huh. 
Isn't it interesting that God is just waiting for us to come to him? He's somewhere standing in the shadows. Are there crosses to be to carry? Standing somewhere in the shadows you'll find him And you'll know him by the nail prints in his hands Are there shadows of deep disappointment And trust that it prove it untrue darkness of night settled round you. Has your hope and your faith wavered too? Standing somewhere in the shadows you'll find Jesus. He's the only one who cares and understands. Standing somewhere in the shadows you'll find Him. As the storm overshadowed your sunshine, and life was a traction for you, and the dreams that you cherished been broken, is your hope filled with bitterness too? Standing some. In the shadows you'll find Jesus He's the only one who cares and understands Standing somewhere in the shadows you'll find Him And you'll know Him by the nail prints in His hands And you'll know Him by the nail prints in His hands Thank you, the Pastor, for the that was such an appropriate song. Our scripture is taken from uh, First Thessalonians chapter uh, <clears throat> one, verses one through thirteen. Chapter three, verses one through thirteen. That's right. Uh, and the Apostle Paul was quite concerned about his uh, believers there in Thessalonica because they were also experiencing trials and uh, difficulty. And his concern, of course, was that they would continue on with the Lord. And as we think about that, we also think about our situation and we realize that we, are, we as a church, we, we're not the only church. I know there's many others. But there is that challenge about with this uh, uh, pandemic and, and uh, we wonder, always wonder in our concern that nobody will be left in the and I crack somewhere feel left out and, and uh, so we need to encourage one another and that's what Paul is doing here so I'll read these verses for you so when we could stand it no longer we thought it best to be left by ourselves in Athens and we sent Timothy who is our brother and co-worker in God's service and spreading the gospel of Christ to strengthen and encourage you in your faith isn't that amazing so that no one would be unsettled by these trials. For you know quite well that we are destined for them. In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that we would be persecuted, and it turned out that way as you well know. For this reason, when I could stand it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith. I was afraid that in some way the tempter 
had tempted you in that our labors might have been in vain. But Timothy has just now come to us from you and has brought good news about your faith and love. He has told us that you always have pleasant memories of us and that you long to see us just as we also long to see you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in all our distress and persecution, we were encouraged by your, because, encouraged about you because of your faith. For now we really live since you are standing firm in the Lord. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we might see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. Now may the Lord add his blessing to this scripture this morning. We'll ask the pastor to come on up and share his word with us this morning. Thank you, Peter, for sharing that word with us from the scriptures, and I trust you followed along as well, too, as he had the opportunity to read it on the, on the screen. I wonder, how many of you have had the opportunity, well, whether it's an opportunity or not, but you're traveling along the road and all of a sudden you see your gas gauge, it's dropping down to a quarter and it's getting down lower and it goes down to the an eighth and then it goes down to where it dips onto that empty sign. And well, that happened to us one, one night, uh, one morning actually, when we were moving our son to Calgary and we were just out by Whitewood and um, we had filled the truck up the night before but pulling the heavy load, that's as far as things were going and nothing was open from uh, up to that point in time. And so, we were just hoping and praying we'd be able to make it to this gas station. And lo and behold, about two to three hundred yards out is when the truck stopped. And we walked to the gas station and, and we got the gas, necessary gas. But I wonder, how many of us in our spiritual life do we find ourselves that way as well too? Where all of a sudden we run out of steam, we're out of gas. And we find that we're running on empty. And even now during this time of crisis, maybe some of you have found yourself running on empty. And you are running very close to that place where the needle of the gas gauge is bouncing around at empty and maybe the light is coming on already too and saying low fuel, low fuel. And it's time that we get energized and re-spiritualized. And so I trust that as we look forward to the next couple of Sundays as things will progress and as we uh, meet together in a downsized version and uh, maybe we can just encourage one another in, in greater ways and so I trust that will all take place. Let's come before the Lord in a short prayer. God and Heavenly Father, may the words that you've given to me and the words of your, your word, the Bible, as they speak to us, we ask Heavenly Father that they would challenge our hearts and our lives during this time. And this we give you thanks in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, this morning as we look at the scripture and as we look at the, we look at a number of portions of different people of the Bible. People who found themselves in, what would you say, down the bottom of the barrel, at the end of the rope, so to speak, or maybe in the darkness of the shadow of life. How many of you have ever experienced divine provision just at the right time and in the right way. We got to do our part, yes, in times of trouble. And it's always a good idea to pray about the things about our part, yourself, for others, and that you have other people praying along with you. And I know that there's people praying along with us as we see and as we, as we find ourselves in this situation that we find ourselves in. But it's also very important for us to continue to read God's Word and have faith 
that God will intervene. Yes, we as human beings, we can intervene. We can have our, our prime minister, we can have our premier, we can have them intervene. But yet, I think it will be ultimately the greatest part when we see how God will work everything out. It's important to respond to God's word and to do what it says for us to do. When your heart is anchored in the heart of God, you and I, we will be able to withstand the storms of life. And let me warn you, if you're a Christian, you will have storms in our lives. But praise God, if you're a normal human being, you'll also find that God is there with you as well. But when you find yourself in the darkness, remember, like the song said, you'll also find God standing in the shadows. In the book of Genesis, there we have the story of Joseph. And Joseph, he was down in the dark period of his life, and he had lost his freedom, and he was sold into slavery into Egypt. He was wrongfully accused of rape by his, his, uh, the, the, the woman, and then he was thrown into jail by his master. He was in the darkest of his prison, innocent, yet in jail in a foreign country. If that would have happened to any one of us, we would have been probably just a little bit peeved, wouldn't we? And maybe we would have just maybe been as hot and got as blistered as a bad paint job, you know, when they sometimes blister in the heat. However, God was up to something there in Jacob and Joseph's life. He was just waiting in the shadows at the right time to make his move. He blessed Joseph even while he was in prison. So that all that what so that whatever Joseph did, it caused it to prosper. And soon the warden of the prison, he put Joseph in charge of, of the prison itself. And so God gave Joseph the gifts of dream interpretation as well, too. For remember, he interpreted the dream of the baker and the and the cupbearer. And then when Pharaoh needed his interpretation of the dream, which troubled him very greatly, Joseph interpreted that for him as well. Pharaoh kept on promoting him. In fact, he promoted him to the second highest position in the land. And he was in charge to manage Egypt's vast agricultural resources. And what Joseph did, he stored the grain and he allocated it in such a way as prepared that there'd be a survival for them for a seven-year period in that seven-year famine. And meanwhile, Jacob's father, back there in Israel, was down in the darkness of his life as well, too. Jacob's other sons, they'd lied to him about Joseph. And Joseph was the son that Jacob loved the most. They told him, he's dead. And some eight or so years later, along with the grief over Jacob's, or Joseph's supposedly death, came that severe famine. And it threatened to starve and kill the rest of the family. Joseph couldn't see anything but darkness around him. But you know what? There was God, just standing in the shadow, waiting, ready to do something. Then we also, perhaps you may feel yourself alone and in the dark, Remember that God, too, is standing right there in the shadows of your life. Job, for example, what happened to him? He lost absolutely everything. His livestock, his wealth, his children. He lost everything but his wife. He was down and out, so to speak. He was sitting there in the dung heap. And with those oozing sorrows, and he was scraping them with glass. But God had not left him alone, there in the darkness of his life. God's faith in Job and in Job's faith in God defeated Satan during that time as well. The result was that God restored a double fold to what Job had lost. So when we feel ourselves all alone there in the darkness of life that has crept around above us, remember, God is still waiting in the shadows and he's ready to help you. 
For example, Gideon in the book of Judges. The darkness of life had crept around about him too. He had lost his confidence. The midnight horde had ravished the land with, like locusts. And Gideon, what he was doing, he was threshing wheat in the wine press. He was hiding from the midnights. He had reached the bottom of the barrel and there he was down in the wine press, pressing or threshing the wheat. When it seemed like the darkness had crept in and overwhelmed Gideon, was God still there? He sure was. He was standing in the shadow, ready to come to Gideon's defense. It was at this point that God met him and directed him to deliver Israel. And how did God do it? Well, it's only 300 men. Gideon defeated the midnight horde and freed the land from the midnight oppression. Has the darkness of your life reached and crouched all around you as well too and put you in a little small corner? Remember, God is still standing there in the shadows. He's ready to deliver you from whatever has you in that darkness of your life. Then in 1 Samuel, there we find David. He fell into a dark point of his life as well too. He's lost his rights when King Saul branded him as an outlaw. And what he had to do, he had to flee the country and live among the Philistines. He was a fugitive at the bottom of the heap, sort of, so to speak. But God had never left him. God was still there. Saul was killed in a battle, and David was established as king of Israel. God was ready to do his part when the time was right. And don't you think God is ready to do his part, even today in this world, when the time is right? In 2 Kings, Hezekiah, king of Judah, was down in the darkness of his life. He found himself surrounded by the army of the Sennacherib and king of Assyria. Sennacherib demanded surrender and reminded King Hezekiah that he had already ruined many cities, he had killed the leaders, and he had dragged everyone else off into slavery. So you, he said, you might as well give up. He told them, the gods of those cities, they can't save you. So what makes you think that Yahweh can save Jerusalem? Hezekiah, what he did, he tore his clothes and he put on sackcloth. He was sliding down into the darkness. But God was waiting down there in the darkness as well. The prophet Isaiah prophesied that Sennacherib's doom would, and was sure. And sure enough, that night the angel of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 of Sennacherib's troops. So Sennacherib, he breaks camp. And he hightails it back to Assyria. And he stayed there until two of his sons assassinated him. Folks, when darkness surrounds you, remember, God is there in the shadows. In 2 Kings chapter 4, we find the prophet's widow. She was down, very depressed. In despair. Her husband had died and what he had done, he had left her a debt which she could not pay. She had two sons and the creditors they came and they were going to take these two sons and they were going to sell them into slavery. And she tells us to Elisha, a desperate situation. She was in the depths of darkness. She was just so horrified at the thought of losing her voice. But God was waiting in the shadows. Elijah asked her, What do you lose? What do you have in your home? And she literally had nothing but a little bit of oil. So Elijah told her to go to her neighbors and collect all the empty jars that she could get to bring, and then to bring them into the house and to take that little pitcher of jar of oil that she had left and to begin pouring it into the jars that she had gathered together. And she filled all the jars and she could sell the oil and she had money left over to live on. And that little jar of oil 
never ran out. Remember, when we're in the darkness, God is still in the shadows. There's Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Well, they fell in the darkness all around them as too. When, when the king Nebuchadnezzar condemned them to death in the fiery furnace, when they wouldn't bow to the idol that he had put up for himself, they stood for the truth, for what was right, and they refused to bow to that great image. Had God deserted them? No, he was waiting. In fact, this time he was waiting for them in the fiery furnace with them. There in the shadow of that furnace. They were there, they were thrown in, and yet they were in harm. Not only that, when Daniel chapter 3, verse 30, the Bible says that came ne Nebuchadnezzar promoted him, promoted these three, four guys in the province of Babylon. God was waiting there in the shadows to do something great when the time was right. Then there's the prophet Ezekiel. The darkness that had intruded around Ezekiel. He was a young priest who lost his country to war and was carried into captivity into Babylon. The temple in Jerusalem that had been trashed and he had no place to practice the priesthood. His professional life, you would say, it was over. He was nothing but somebody's slave now. He was in the darkness of life. God was standing there in the shadow zone. In an instant, God's what he did, he reform, uh, reformulated Israel's theology. He appeared to Ezekiel in a vision in the fiery cloud, which had those four living winged creatures whose appearance was like burning coals riding wheels within the wheels as the glory of God descended to the earth. And it all happened there beside the Kebar River in Babylon. And above the area over their heads was the throne of Sapphire, and above the throne was the figure of a man glowing with the glory of the Lord. And that probably would have been God or Jesus Christ. God is not confined to the temple of Jerusalem. God was not confined to the borders of Israel. God was not confined to the temple ritual that was taking place. God was much more. He's much bigger, much better much holier. He's an awesome God. More than what the children of Israel could imagine, or more than what you and I can ever imagine as well too. God was on the throne and His throne is over all the earth. And it cannot be put in a box. He cannot be contained in such a small place. He cannot be contained in the temple. He cannot be contained in this church. He is outside. He is everywhere. And all we need to do is call upon Him. So remember, folks, when you're standing there in the darkness, God is there standing with you in the shadows. In our daily bread, there was this article, it's an old story, so, and, uh, but the early American natives, they had a unique practice of training their young braves. On the night of the boy's 13th birthday, after learning, hunting, scouting, and the fishing skills, he would be put to one final test. He'd be blindfolded and taken several miles away from the camp. And then, as he was left there alone, he, would, he could take off his blindfold. And he'd be found and find, usually they'd find themselves in the middle of the woods. And he was terrified. Every time a twig snapped, he thought, it's a wild honey that's out to get me. After what seemed an eternity, dawn broke and the first rays of the sunlight, they entered the interior of the forest. And looking around, the boy saw the flowers, the trees, and the outline of the path. Then to his utter astonishment, he beheld the figure of a man standing just a few feet away. He was armed with a bow and arrow. It was his father. Folks, that's the way God works with us. 
We sometimes may feel all alone and we're so afraid and we hear the twig snap and we wonder what's up next. But God is still standing there beside us. Peter, he too, was standing in the darkness after he denied Jesus three times. He was a miserable failure. He was beside himself. But God was waiting in the shadows. Jesus met Peter on the shoreline of the Lake of Galilee and restored Peter's con confidence. He restored Peter's faith. And he restored Peter's position in the kingdom of God. What was the result? Well, on that great day of Pentecost, Peter got up and delivered that powerful sermon and sat down without even giving an altar call. People were so convicted on the spot, and they asked what, what they must do to be saved. And just imagine, 3,000 people got saved. I trust when this pandemic is over that there will be people coming to the churches that have gotten saved as a result of watching some broadcast on TV. 3,000 people got saved that day when Peter preached. In Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas, they were severely flogged and thrown there into prison for casting out that demonic spirit from that girl. They were thrown down into that dark, damp, cold prison. About midnight, they were praying and singing to God and the other prisoners were listening to them. So I encourage you, who are and call yourself a Christian. Remember, people are observing you. They're observing you right now. How do you respond to this crisis that we find ourselves in? The darkness of this time of life. How do you find yourself in the pressures of life? They look at you. What do they see in all the darkness that surrounds you? Do they see Jesus standing there in your shadow as well? Well, back to Paul and Silas. Suddenly there was that violent earthquake, and the prison door flies open, and the chains fell off all the prisoners. And the guard, he was about to kill himself, to take his life, when Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself, we're all down here. As a result, the jailer and all his household became believers and were baptized. When you see the darkness of life, God is still there in the shadows. In Revelation chapter 1, the Apostle John was all alone. He was an old man confined to the prison island of Patmos in Greece. He was a political prisoner, exiled for practicing his faith and leading the church in Asia Minor. Yes, we would say he was effectively stopped from teaching and preaching. And we might say that that's a difficult spot for a preacher to be in when all sudden things just come to an end. John was in the dark, so to speak. But God was up to something. Jesus appeared to John and the Lord on the Lord's day when John was in the Spirit. God is still doing these kind of miracles for His people. The result was, we got the book of Revelation. The last book in the Bible. It has been a comfort and an assurance to all Christians throughout the ages. Yes, John's situation looked so hopeless, but he was able to influence the church for all time, not only for then, but for now, while he was there in exile. Remember when it seems the darkest around you. You know who's standing beside you. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. You might even feel like life has crushed around you and crushed you and you'll never be well again. In fact, some people probably feel that this world will never be well again. I believe it will be well again because God hasn't left us yet. He's still there in the shadows. Remember when in the darkest hour, standing there in the shadow, you'll find Jesus. You're not alone. He's there with you. Kay Hughes, in Liberating Ministry from the 
Success Syndrome writes this. It was Christmas Eve back in 1875. And you've heard of this guy, Iris Sank. He was traveling on the Delaware River steamboat when he was recognized by some of the passengers. His picture had been in the newspaper because he was recognized as a song leader for the famous evangelist Dion Moody. They asked him to sing one of his hymns, but Sandy, he said, no, I don't want to sing my, my hymn, but I, I prefer to sing William Bradbury's hymn, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. And as he sang one of the stanzas, it began, We are thine, do thou befriend us, be the guardian of our way. When he finished, a man stepped from the shadows and asked, Did you ever serve in the Union Army? Yes, Mr. Sankey he answered, in the spring of 1860. Can you remember if you were doing picket duty on a bright moonlit night in 1862? Yes, Mr. Sankey he answered, very much so. But he was very surprised. So did I, but I was serving in the Confederate Army. When I saw you standing at your post, I thought to myself, that fellow will never get away alive. I raised my musket and took aim. I was standing in the shadow, completely un or concealed, while the full light of the moon was falling down upon you. At that instant, just like a moment ago, you raised your eyes to heaven, and you began to sing. And I thought to myself, let him sing his song to the end. I can shoot him afterwards. He's my victim at all events, and my bullet cannot miss him. But the song you sang then was the song you just sang now. I heard the words perfectly. We are thine to thou be friends. Be the guardian of our way. Those words, they stirred up some memories. I began to think of my childhood, my God-fearing mother. She had many times told me and sung to me the song, that song to me. And when you finished your song, it was impossible for me to take aim again. I thought, the Lord was able to save that man from certain death must surely be great and mighty. Don't you think so? God is still in the business of being great and mighty. His arm dropped down, limp by his side. Couldn't pull the trigger. They say that Lord Robert Louis Stevenson told another story first, and it's worth retelling. It seems as a storm got a seafaring vessel off a rocky coast, and the wind and the waves had threatened to drive the boat to destruction. In the midst of the terror, one of the daring pastors, what he did, he, he, he makes his way, and he finds his way to the pilot house. He wasn't supposed to, but he did. Then he beheld an intriguing sight. The ship's captain, what he had done, he had tied himself to his post, secure against the raging elements. And he held the wheel fast in his arms, in his hands, turning the ship inch by inch once more out into the sea. And the pilot, he saw the watcher, and he smiled at the watcher. And the daring pastor, he found his way once again below deck where the passengers they huddled together and encouraged him, he said to them, I've seen the face of the pilot, and he smiled. All is well. You know, there are times when you and I need to hear that. Especially when we feel being tossed about like in, in a raging storm. It helps us to remember the pilot still smiles. Can you imagine the pilot smiling at you? Now, in whatever you're facing, I can. And I know the good Lord is standing right by, and He will see us soon. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before You. We thank You, Lord, for loving us and caring for us. We thank You, Heavenly Father, too, for blessing and guiding. And we pray, Lord, that You will just lead us by the power of Your mighty hand. 
We thank you for the privilege that is ours just to worship together, to gather together. And so, Lord, <coughs> we pray that you will just bless us in a special way. And this we give you thanks. Amen. <coughs> just gonna pick up. Can you mind turn it off for a minute? Thank you, Pastor Harry, for that uh, very good uh, service or uh, message this morning. Uh, the song that uh, that uh, I was thinking of and we would what we want to sing is a, is a, uh, I think is very appropriate. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, and it it, it just tells us again how how. Jesus is there. He is, like the pastor said, he's in the shadows. He's, he's there with us all the time. And so this song somewhat expresses that as well. So let's sing, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. <laughs> services again uh, next Sunday is our first crack at it at 11 a.m. and we, we want to encourage you to come early to allow for proper seating arrangements we we believe that we have it established or planned well enough that we can handle all the people coming but uh, we do uh, appreciate your corporate cooperation and coming early so we can get it all set up properly because all safety precautions will be adhered to. The two meters or six foot separation from those outside your household. So that means that we have to, uh, we just have to organize that. Hand sanitizing as you come in and as you leave. 
And also the thing that we want you to note is that washroom use will be very limited. And nursery is not available, classrooms are not available, and no junior church. So there is certain un, uh, restrictions, but uh, not to worry about that. People are reminded to stay home if they're feeling unwell, even if their symptoms are mild. So just keep that in mind. But we uh, let's just pray that the Lord will just work things out for us and we can be uh, start heading out in that direction. Okay, Pastor. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. Well, now and forevermore. Well, depart in peace. Oh, you're staying in your house. <laughs> God bless you anyway. Have a great Sunday afternoon. God bless.